Anyway, I wanted to thank you all. What we're going to do today um, is take a very quick walk through of what's happening in this world of quarantines. Uh, you know, I'm sure your world suddenly changed dramatically in mid-March as our world changed suddenly in mid-March. Um, as a company that has been helping people raise money through the charity auction process for 25 years and pretty uh, deeply immersed in uh, helping people do those auctions in rooms, uh, in, in gala rooms, suddenly we found that all of our customers, 100% of them, were no longer allowed to have in-room galas, literally overnight. So what do you do as a company? Well, um, luckily, since 2003, we've been um, supporting online auctions with a product called MeisterWeb. And up until March of this year, those online auctions were typically designed to augment the in-room gala. They were either designed to be a pre-event online where, you know, wonderful event uh, uh, chairs like yourself do a great job of procurement. And because you've done such a great job of procurement, uh, you over procure. And so you realize that your in-room uh, in gala is gonna have 300 people, but you've got 500 items to sell. And that puts uh, your bidders in what we call a buyer's market, not you in a, in a seller's market. And that means that your items don't sell for enough. So to under, accommodate that since 2003, we've been doing online auctions to allow you to sell 100 or 200 items prior to your event and get, get the item quantity down. Or sometimes it's post-event online auction where things that didn't sell in your silent auction, you can put up for bid afterwards. So that's where we've lived since 2003, helping people that are doing in-room galas. Once we hit mid-March and all the in-room galas were pretty much canceled or postponed, we very quickly shifted gears and realized that that tool that had been around for not quite two decades could instantly be turned over to be the primary tool by which we all raise money. And uh, we literally in 24 hours started shifting people over. We, we had a number of clients that were within days and, and, and even uh, quite a few more that were in a week or two of having their in-room gala and suddenly having their rug pulled out from underneath them. And so we, uh, we quickly flipped them over to, uh, to online, all with extraordinary results. And I'm going to share some of those results with you today. So that's why we're here today. You, I'm assuming many, if not all of you, have experienced the same issue. And so where do you, where do you go from here? Well, when you can no longer have an in-room gala, you've got a, a number of options available to you, not all of which are very good. Uh, one is cancel your event. That's you know, not necessarily a great option. You can postpone your event. Many of you have and others have done that. You've gone from uh, a fall, I'm sorry, a, a spring auction to a fall auction, or perhaps you postponed it in, into spring of 2021. You can find a different kind of an event. You know, what can we do now that we're all uh, in Zoom world? Uh, what can we do to raise money in Zoom world? Um, you can reduce your need for money. In other words, whatever your cause is, whether it's a school or it's a, a social service or it's a, 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 something you have to do with, with research or whatever, well, perhaps you could reduce your need for money and get by with, with uh, supporting fewer people. That's not a very attractive, um, very not a very attractive option for most people. Uh, you can go ahead and have your event anyway, but do it virtually. Oh, well, that, that might actually work. And we're gonna, that's kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Um, or you could just postpone your event to some time in the future, but replace it now with an online event. And by replacing it now with an online event, uh, you pick up some money now and you pick up some more money later. And then what you do in between now and then is you replenish the items that you sell now. In other words, go ahead and have a virtual event in the spring or, or summer to replace the spring or summer gala. And then go ahead and have your, your regular gala, uh, you know, maybe in the fall or early spring next year. But in the meantime, uh, your virtual event gives you some revenue now. And, and then you replenish those items and have another event. So do two events instead of one. Or you could just reach out to your supporters and say, hey, everybody, we need the money. How about writing a check? Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of smiling on your, on your camera. So I'm thinking that that's probably an option that you 
may have considered for about 30 milliseconds and then changed your mind and decided that probably would not go over very well. And, uh, and that's what most people have realized, that doesn't go over very well. So here's the real world. Here's where we really are today. We still need the money. The need's not going to go away. Your need's not going to go away. Um, our support network wants to help. You know, the, they're, they're locked in their rooms. <laughs> you know, they're coming up for air once in a while to go to the store. Uh, but they still want to help you. They're, your need has not caused them to no longer be willing to support you. Uh, your supporters have a lot of time on their hands. They're at home. They're looking for things to do. They've probably watched already more episodes, uh, uh, you know, of their favorite TV show on Netflix than they would ever have thought they would watch in, you know, in a lifetime. Uh, and so they're looking for an outlet. And if you do something online, you're going to give them an outlet. So a virtual event can actually be fun and it can be very profitable. And what we've been finding since mid-March with our clients is they have been very fun and they have been quite profitable. And I'm going to show you a couple of those today to kind of give you an idea. So here's some of the things that you can do online. You can have an online auction. We have one, uh, one organization, it's Ronald McDonald House down in the southeast that we know of, that actually did an online 10K. They, they signed up runners. They issued runner numbers. Uh, they even issued a release, a medical release, that all of the virtual runners had to sign, indicating that if they got injured during their online 10K, that they would not hold Ronald McDonald House uh, uh, responsible. Uh, so you can have some fun with online auctions. You know, it doesn't have to be all seriousness. You can, you can have a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek there and have some fun with it. You can do an online golf tournament. I actually have written a procedure for how to have an online golf tournament. I'll probably be releasing that sometime next week. So if you were thinking of doing an online golf tournament, guess what? We can help you do that. It's very possible. And of course, you can do the, the, the normal asks, you know, mailing list, Facebook, uh, you know, GoFundMe, uh, Twitter, all that kind of thing. Uh, and then we have text to bid uh, and text to fund. And text to bid and, and, and uh, text to fund are ways for you to let people give you money by cell phone. Text to bid, uh, bidding by cell phone, text to fund is just straight donations by, by cell phone. So what have been some of the results? Well, they've been working. We've got a couple of months under our belt now, and what we're finding is that people are still bidding, they're still buying, and online auctions are entertaining. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe not as entertaining as being in a gala room and drinking wine and eating fancy hors d'oeuvres and having a, you know, a surf and turf meal served to you and all that sort of thing. It's not quite the same, but they are still entertaining. Yields, ironically, are very comparable to what your yields are in your gala. We've been looking at the silent auction yields and typically in a silent auction, you look for anywhere north of 50% up to 70, 80, 90% yield in a silent auction. And uh, we're finding with the in-room, uh, I'm sorry, with the, with the online galas, the silent auctions are achieving 60, 70, 80, 85% yield. Very comparable to what you'd have in room. You can still do a raise the paddle. I'm gonna show you a few websites here in a little bit that actually did uh, very effective raise the paddles. Uh, no reason not to, not to do that. So if your typical audience would come to your gala and you'd ask them, uh, you know, you do a little three minute video and then somebody would say, well, now's your chance to help us out. Would you put your paddle in the air and make a straight cash contribution? That's still available to you. That does not go away because of uh, the virtual world. And by the way, your sponsors, uh, they still get, recognition. You know, one of the concerns people have is, well, if we do an online auction, how do we recognize our sponsors? Well, you know, typically those sponsors get three or four hours of recognition in your in-room gala, right? I mean, they, they walk in, they see their, their name on a banner somewhere, they see it on a, on a PowerPoint on the display screen, it might be pro, you know, printed in the program book. But when the gala is over and everybody's heading home, that gala book, you know, is now being thrown away. And uh, the memory of that sponsorship starts to fade pretty quickly. But with an online, you can have two, three, four, five weeks leading up to your online gala, all of, all of which can be exposure for your sponsors as people are going to the online gala to preview the items or to get information about that online gala. Those sponsors can be prominent on your website. And so now you can say to your sponsors, we're not going to give you four hours of recognition. We're going to give you four weeks of recognition. And when you can say that to a sponsor, that, uh, that's very attractive. And they're not that difficult to do. 
you know, and, and actually, I hate to say this, um, but doing an online auction is so much easier than doing a gala. And I, that, that seems counterintuitive for a company that sells software to manage in-room, ballroom-type uh, galas to tell people, you know, your world could actually be made an awful lot easier if you didn't do that doggone gala. Um, now, I realize there's a time issue here. You know, once, you, once everybody gets about, out and about and they're looking to be entertained again, the online gala may not be uh, quite as uh, attractive as the in-room gala. But you could convert now. You could convert to a to an in-room, I'm sorry, to an online gala from an in-room gala pretty easily. It's it's not difficult. We have one client out here. I don't think they'd mind if I mention their name, uh, O'Day High School. They were six days away from having their gala at the Weston Hotel. And in six days, we flipped them over to online, and they actually netted more money with the online gala than they uh, would have made online. I'm sorry, they would have made in-room. And the reason for that is they saved ninety thousand dollars in expenses. They didn't have to serve uh, meals to five hundred people, and uh, and so they were quite pleased. Their net went up rather than down by going online. And so the tools are readily available. We have the tools. We can assist you with that. It's not complicated. If you've already been planning an in-room gala, you probably already have the items in your database. So it's pretty easy just to take the items that are already in your database and and pull them in. To the online uh, to the online world, and so uh, bottom line is that um, your four hours can now be converted to four days pretty easily. So, what I'm going to recommend, and what we're finding has been working really well, is for best practices is to stick to a familiar agenda. Don't change everything up. You know, just because you're online doesn't mean you do things 100% different than you did before. So what so what do we mean by that? Uh, well, we mean have a specific opening and welcome. Let people preview the items for two or three weeks in advance. That's wonderful. Do that. But then when it's time to open the auction, don't just let it open on its own, but make a big hullabaloo about that. Make a big deal about that. You know, send out emails, send out, uh, send out things on your, on your Facebook, you know, do their, their Twitter feeds, uh, you know, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever you happen to be using, your, your, your whole social media campaign. Let everybody know, hey, uh, the, the auction starts tomorrow. And then in the morning, hey, the auction starts today at noon. And then at 11 o'clock, the auction starts in an hour. And then when it opens, do a welcome. Have a video of some kind so that when they tune in and you open the video, I'm sorry, and you open the, the, the bidding at, at, a, at noon, have a video. Thanks for coming to our online auction. Here's what we have in store for you for the next four days. The silent auction is going to run until Friday. We're going to close the silent auction at 8 p.m. Friday, and we're going to open the live auction. The live auction is going to be open until 8 p.m. on Saturday. You know, but give them a little video walkthrough of what to expect all week. This is something you would do in room. This is something you would typically do if you had an in room gala. You would have somebody do a welcome, and you'd tell everybody what the evening's going to include. We're going to have uh, dinner, and we're going to have a uh, you know, we're going to do a little live auction. We're going to have a raise the paddle. We're glad that you came here to support us. You would do that in room. So whatever you would do in room, you now do online. Close the silent in sections and count it down. Same thing holds that you would do at an in-room gala. You know, you want to compress the bids. Typically with a, your silent auction, you do you multiple sections. You close the sections down at different times. You do that to create some sense of urgency and to, and to compress the bidding and to make the, the second and third silence more valuable than the first. And you move, you're moving people towards the live auction section. And so do the same thing. But now instead of a three hour silent auction or a two hour or one and a half hour silent auction, you now have a three day silent auction. The agenda is the same, the time frame is different. So your three, your three days is what you would normally do in an hour and a half or two hours the night of, but you're still gonna close in sections. Make regular announcements along the way. Use your email. Use your, again, use your social media. The whole idea here is to make this interactive. You don't want people to think, okay, it was open on Wednesday and I got till Saturday night to bid. You want to let them know things are happening. Highlight items, you know, send out an email blast to people and say, uh, hey, well, we want to let everybody know that, uh, that the first section is going to close tomorrow. The second section is going to close, uh, you know, the next day. Let them know about some items that are doing really well. You would normally have your MC or your auctioneer walk around the silent auction and make announcements. Well, don't overdo it, but you can use that email to make some announcements along the way, just like you would do in a room. And then have a live auction section. Now, wait a minute, Jay, you mean a live auction. How do you do a live auction if you're online? 
Well, it's not exactly the same. Uh, a big mistake would be to open up the live auction items one at a time because you can't hold people's attention one at a time. You know, in an in-room gala, the auctioneer can start with item number one and people that are interested in item number four, five, or seven, or ten are maybe not interested in the first item, but they've got their wine to drink, they've got their meal to eat, they've got their friends at their table they can chit-chat with, they can read their program book, they've got lots of distraction. Online, it's deadly, absolutely deadly. If you open one item up for your live auction and your audience doesn't care about that item, they're waiting for item six, seven, or eight, they're not gonna sit there and patiently watch other people online bid. They're gonna to wanna to go do something else. They'll go work on a project in the garage or they'll, they'll, you know, they'll go off uh, in, into a different website. So what you wanna do when you open your live auction section is make it special by having a separate section, but open the items all at the same time and in a much shorter time frame than your silent auction. So for example, your silent auction might run, might run Wednesday until Saturday noon. Your live auction might run from noon Saturday to 8 p.m. Saturday. So it's a, it's a compressed time frame because you want everyone to know this is special. These are the items we would have sold in the live auction if we had a live auction, but they're special. So that's why you, you do it all at the same time open the bidding at the same time, let bidder, the, the people interested in bid, item number one, let them bid uh, at the same time people are bidding on, bidding on items four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's how you'll drive up your, your bids. Now, that said, you should still have live video. And yes, Meister Web, the tool we're talking about, has live video capability now. We just added that last week. So you can have live video now. So an auctioneer or MC or auction chair or CEO of your organization, whatever, can be talking up the items as they're being bid. You know, hey, item number one, uh, uh, the, the wagon full of toys is doing pretty good, but man, that Italian dinner, item number seven, it's got lots of love, it's, getting, it's doing great. And that uh, weekend getaway to the Hamptons, you know, uh, it, it's doing really well too. So your MC is talking up the items on live video during the time that the live auction is underway. Again, as I said, stick to a familiar agenda. This is what your guests have expected and, and, uh, and let them continue to, to uh, experience the same experience. Do a raise the paddle. There's no reason why you can't do a raise the paddle. There are people there to support you. Let them go ahead and give you money. Don't, don't talk them out of giving you money. Let them give you money and set it up with a video. And then as you're setting it up with a video, use a donation thermometer to show the donations in real time. You know, you want that to come out of that video with your live MC saying, all right, now it's your turn. Let's go ahead and uh, take your, you know, cl click on the raise the paddle button here on the website and make, uh, make your donation. And as they're making the donation, you're going to see those thermometers go up in real time. And we're just a minute or two away from me showing you that. And then use other videos throughout the bidding process. You can insert videos. You know, one things we, one of the things we've done now with MeisterWeb is you can put in canned videos, you can put in real-time video. Uh, live videos. So use videos throughout the entire bidding process. You, you know, do new videos each day. So when people come on Wednesday, they see a video. On Thursday, they see a different video. And on Friday, they see maybe something fresh and a, and a new video. And then activate your social media. You know, ask your supporters to share a link. Uh, talk it up. And by the way, you want to make it kind of bi bi-directional. So ask your bidders to post something on your social media. Tell them to take a picture of them sitting around their living room bidding on your auction. Uh, or if they're sitting around their dinner table, you know, eating dinner while they're watching, while they're watching the live auction going on. Uh, tell them to, to take some pictures of themselves and post it on your social media so that others that are tuned in on your social media can see that activity. And by the way, we can, into MeisterWeb, we can pull your social media link directly into MeisterWeb. So while people are are bidding online on MeisterWeb, they can also be watching the activity on your, on your Facebook. And uh, that, that again makes it very interactive. So what are some things to avoid? And again, this comes out of the best practices that we've uh, observed uh, with uh, quite a number of, of people converting over to online. What are some of the things we found that, that are things uh, that are counterproductive? And by the way, counterproductive, and they may also be to you counterintuitive. So let's start with the first one. Don't ask for a credit card to view the items or to bid. Let people pay when they win. But Jay, if we don't get the credit card up front, how do we protect from somebody bidding and winning on something and then deciding not to pay? And I see some head nods out there. 
Well, that, that's an issue, but let's think about it. I always like to tell my clients that you don't make money from the high bidder, you only collect it from the high bidder. You make your money from the second, third, fourth, and fifth place bidders because they're the ones that make sure the high bidder pays appropriately, right? So every time someone places a bid, you've made money. It only matters that the last bidder, the highest bidder, actually pay the pay. So if you allowed dozens of people to bid and ultimately only one person's gonna pay, does it matter that the people that were bidding didn't have a credit card on file? It cost you nothing to let them bid, but it made you a lot more money because they incremented the bids up. And so why, why build a barrier to, to getting more bid increments. You want as many bid increments as you can possibly get. Now, ultimately, if the person, the one person that happened to be the highest bidder changes their mind, and you're worried about, well, how do we, how do we collect money from someone who changed their mind? Let's think of that logically. If they're one of your supporters and they change their mind, do you really want to say too bad, you know, you bought it anyway? You know, we're gonna charge your credit card because we got it on file three days ago. And you know, we, we realize you made a mistake because you were drinking too much on Saturday night, but tough, tough luck, you know, we're still charging. That's not a very good mes message to a supporter. So you're gonna let them off the hook anyway. And since you're gonna let them off the hook anyway, just go to the next high bidder. One nice thing about, uh, about MeisterWeb is that it keeps a bidding history. So you'll know who the second high bidder is, you'll know who the third high bidder is, you'll know who the fourth high bidder is. So let the person gently off the hook, go to the second high bidder, send them an email and say, congratulations, you won that trip, or you won that, those tickets to that ball game, or you won that Italian dinner, whatever it might be. Let them, let the second high winner become the first high winner. And by the way, as I'm mentioning that, let me explain one other thing. Uh, you know how sometimes during the live auction we do what we call selling twice, or selling choice, or selling, you know, uh, selling to, to multiple people? This happens a lot when, when a donor says, you know what, if my weekend cabin goes really well, it's okay if the auctioneer doubles it up. I'm sure you're all familiar with doubling up. Well, how do you double up online? Well, it's actually quite simple because we have the second high bidder and the third high bidder and the fourth high bidder in our bidding history. We merely go to the second high bidder and say, well, we have good news and bad news. You know, the bad news is you weren't the high bidder. The good news is the high bidder was willing to pay $250 more than you. If you're willing to bump your bid up $250, we'll let you have one too because the donors will let you let two people win this. So you can still do doubles, just like you did before. Nothing changes. Second one is don't require registration of you, the items. I, I've seen this happen as well. People are saying, well, I don't want people looking at all the items unless they, uh, you know, unless they register. Well, why does it matter? It only matters if they place a bid. So again, the more people that can view the item will likely pull in more people that are willing to place a bid on the item. So don't put in a false barrier. Don't make them register just to take a look. It's like eBay. You can look all over eBay and see all kinds of things on eBay. They don't make you register just to look. Now, once you place a bid, they, they make you register, right? Well, it, it holds for us as well. Let people look at the catalog, let them get excited about the items, let them share the items with a friend, but don't force them to, to register just to take a look. Once they place a bid, then you want them to register. Keep the time relatively short to, for a sense of urgency. You know, four days is good, four weeks is not, as far as the bidding window. You can have four weeks for, um, by the way, uh, I, I just, I'm gonna stop in just a second. If there's anyone out there that would like a copy of all of these slides, we're more than happy to send them to you. Just shoot us an email. Uh, my email is at the last slide here. Just write down my email when you get it shoot me an email and say you'd like the slides. I'll be happy to send these to you. You don't have to take furious notes unless you particularly want to. So I want to tell you to keep the time relatively short. It's great if you can preview the items for three or four weeks prior to your event, but once you open your bidding window, you don't need a week or 10 day bidding window. You don't need a two week bidding window. All you need is a four day bidding window because pretty much that's when all the bidding is going to occur anyway. They're going to look and look and look and look and the last one day or two or three is when the bidding is going to occur. So just you create a sense of urgency. And then finally, long descriptions don't really help you. You know, we like to like write these really long flowery descriptions of everything. Uh, online, keep it short, keep it factual. In fact, I would use bullets, bullet points. You know, this is a weekend uh, in the Hamptons. It's, it's Friday, Friday through Sunday. Uh, you know, it, it's for four people. It includes this, this, and this. By the way, the house has a 
has a, has a uh, fishing boat you're willing to, you're, you know you're you're welcome to use in other words the people online are going to want to just see the facts they're not going to they don't this should not be about how fancy can you write so keep them short keep them factual and absolutely don't forget you need a good picture or pictures now, one nice thing about MeisterWeb is that it will automatically create a slideshow for you uh, on each item if you wish to upload more than one picture. So, you know, for a silent auction item, you might only need a picture of the basket. But for that weekend getaway in the Hamptons, you might want to put four or five or six slides of the cottage. You know, what does it look like from outside? What's the view from the deck? What do the bedrooms look like? What about what's the kitchen area and living area looking like? So put three, four, five, six slides up there. It's totally okay. Uh, Meister Web will create a nice little slideshow for you to be able to do that. So let's look at some websites. I know you've all been waiting for this. Okay, Jay, shut up and show me some websites. Okay, so I'm ready to ready to do that now. And let me see if I can. Uh, and Rich, you may have to jump in here and tell me, are we able to? Uh, am I still sharing uh, the the same screen, or is it on a different screen? Probably a different screen, right? Um, you're just uh, all I'm, well. I'm looking at the uh, the matrix here, so I say, oh, okay, there is a slide there. Sorry, I so think you're good. Does everybody agree? So, uh, well, does it say Central Catholic High School? No, now no, it does, right? Did I just did I just fix that? Are you now seeing Central Catholic High School? It's uh, it's coming here. Just get loaded. Oh, so the screen is paused. I have to, I have to, uh, there we go, new, new, new screen. So let me go do a new screen. This one, here we go, share. Sorry about that, that was me. I, I stopped sharing my screen accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. All right, so now we can all see Central Catholic High School. Just give me a nod if you can see it. Somebody out there nod. Yep, they can see it, great. Yeah. All right, so this is just one. I'm gonna show you several. Um, Let's just start with a simple one. This is a uh, local band, a local high school uh, band gala. Now they did something a little different. They did an online auction leading up to their live auction, which was on a single day. And then the, on the live auction day to make it seem even more sense of urgency, even though people were bidding online throughout the week, on the live auction day, they shifted to uh, text to bid where people could bid by cell phone. And the reason they did that is they wanted people to be able to bid all day long or all evening from their cell phone, wherever they happen to be. They didn't have to be confined to be in front of a computer because they were bidding by cell phone. They could, uh, they just had to send a, the text, uh, the word Newport to uh, 71760 and all the bidding was on their cell phone using our text to bid system. So you can do that. You can do a hybrid where uh, you can sign your silent auction can be on uh, on the web with MeisterWeb, and then your your live auction can be on text to bid or you can do all the bidding on text to bid throughout the week if you want and still use the website for information and for honoring your sponsors and things like that. Camilla's House is another one. Uh, this is one that we just finished a week or so ago in uh, in Miami. They they raised over a million dollars and uh, which is about what they normally raise and so they did it online uh, and they use the text to bid system again for 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 bidding. Um, let's go. Um, oops, I'm trying to get down to the next one, and it jumped on me. So there we go. So this is interesting. Um, are you all seeing St. Luke's Parish now? You all see St. Luke's Parish. We we crushed it. Uh, this was a, this was just May 15th and 16th, just last week. Um, their event was scheduled. For May 15th and 16th. So they only had a short period of time to, to switch over, but they did. Uh, and you notice what they did. They put a video in here, watch the video, and then of course you have the fund to need thermometer went up. And so they go click on the video in here, and I don't know if it's going to show it. I think it's going to show you. And uh, you can do the same thing for yours. Um, you have your, your video, they click on the video here, and uh, they run the video. That's the ask, and they have the headmaster, whatever, and they're talking about the the school and there you go when it's all done they tell them to click on the donate now button and the donate now button takes them uh takes them back over to um uh where'd i go here i'll go back go back one there it is takes them back over to here and uh they can watch the thermometer go up so this is the kind of thing you can do to make it dynamic notice that we're dynamically rolling in animation we want animation we're using uh, we're using sponsors are getting recognized here 
Um, we're putting in a, a way for people to make donations throughout the whole process here. Then go over here to their uh, live auction items, and they're the live auction items in there that they sold. You can drill down on any particular one one item, and there there's the one item. This is what it looks like, and. Uh, on an individual item, you can add an item to a wish list. So this is where previewing three or four weeks in advance helps you out because as you put the items up for bid, your supporters can go up there and they can look at those items and start bonding with those items and getting excited about those items. They can add them to their wish list. They can get them frustrated because they can't bid on it yet. You know, hold them off. Say, no, I'm sorry, you have to wait. You can't bid on this yet, but you can add it to your wish list. You can email it to a friend. Maybe it's a dinner or something and you wanna go in, in with a friend, you can do that. Um, and of course we have what we call bid butler in here. You can put in a maximum bid and the software will bid on the bidder's behalf up to their maximum. One feature that we are about to add, you're not seeing it now because it hasn't been rolled out yet, but we're gonna be rolling it out within the next week or two. So if your event is more than a couple weeks away, you'll see the new feature. And that's this area here, right below the picture of the live auction item. This will be a scrolling scoreboard uh, of bids for that particular item. So it, it allows people to camp out on one item. You know, if they're really interested in this particular item, they, they want that, that long weekend, they can camp out on that item on their screen and they can watch the bids flow in from other people. And when they're ready, they can go over and jump in and place their bid. This is very much designed to try and mimic a real live auction in room where you would look around the room and you'd see who else is bidding or who's bidding against me on that. You know, and it, how you, you know how people stand up at their dinner table and look across the room. Where'd that bid come from? Well, you'll, this is going to create that same sense of urgency to bid because you'll be seeing other people bidding and scrolling uh, on the screen as you're watching the item that you're interested in. So the way we've added that feature, that'll be coming up. That'll be coming up shortly. Uh, this is an interesting one. This is one where I'm going to be the auctioneer uh, on June uh, on June four uh, June fifth. Um, this is a boys and girls club in uh, in Bellingham, Washington. What makes this one interesting is that it was originally designed to be an in room gala uh, at a casino. The casino is closed, but the casino still has a lot of casino workers are paying. So what the boys and girls club is going to do is, of course, they're starting their silent auction on the first. Um, but on the Friday the 5th, they're gonna do a one hour live program. And I'll be there as their auctioneer when in my tuxedo along with their development director and their CEO of the Boys and Girls Club, we'll be in a television studio. And we're gonna do a one hour live video feed directly onto this website during that one hour live video feed. But here's what's gonna be really cool about it. People are signing up for Gala in a Box and, uh, and hundreds are doing it. And so what's going to happen is the hotel is going to prepare the banquet and send the banquet meal along with a bottle of, uh, of wine uh, out to everyone that is going to be in the audience. And we're going to literally run a live auction virtually with the hotel uh, you know, uh, employees as the delivery people knocking on the door and saying, here's your meal from the Silver Reef Casino. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to record it. Uh, so you'll be we'll be able to play that later on, but that's just a, again it's an outside the box way of thinking. You can be very creative, and that I think is a very creative uh, way of of doing it. So with that said, I've talked for about thirty minutes. I want to make sure we have plenty of time for uh, questions. I'm sure you have some questions. As I said before, my PowerPoint I'll certainly make available to to uh, to all of you. I have a list of about uh, fifteen websites that. Uh, you can go preview if you'd like to see what, you know, what other websites look like. I can email you as well the list of those websites. You can just click on the link and go take a look at, at, uh, at, at what they're doing. And so with that, let me turn it back over to Rich. And Rich, if you could help us orchestrate some q and I'd sure appreciate it. Cynthia? I'm wondering how the auction items are delivered. What have you seen people doing? Okay, so thank you for that question. Um, one of the things that, that MeisterWeb does and Textabed does is when the auction is over, the winner will automatically get a, uh, an email that says that you have won and here's a link to pay. And they click the link, they go in and they pay. And then after they pay, they get a, um, a receipt, a thank you email, and in the thank you email, it says here's how to arrange for your items. 
So it may be that if they're in the same city that you uh, arrange to have them pick it up at the school or pick it up at the facility, wherever it might be. If they're remote, then, uh, you know, then we arrange for shipping. One of the things you might want to put in your auction rules, prominently displayed on your main screen, you have a, have a link there that says, you know, click here for auction rules and put in the auction rules that, uh, that, that, that shipping is not included in the final bid that anyone that, you know, winning bidder is responsible for the cost of shipping, but that shipping will be arranged. So that's pretty much, it really kind of depends on, on where your supporters are. If you're a school and all of your supporters are in the same town and maybe even in the same community, delivery is probably not, probably not an issue. But if you're an organization that might pick up support from alumni in other states, uh, then arranging for shipping might, you know, might be appropriate. Okay. Anyone else on a question? Uh, Jay, we've got some questions in the chat box. Um, if you want to open that up, um, okay. you can check that out. All right, and then Katie's next in the queue to, for for verbal. So okay. let me go to the let me go to the chat box here. If you see it, just go ahead and read me the question. Well, let's see. We have one. Uh, Katie says, um, "What have people been success successfully auctioning off?" Uh, Katie, you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, we're just on the East Coast and struggling with kind of what we would do for our live auction items because we don't really foresee us being off lockdown anytime real soon. So I'm just curious what people have been um, successful, especially in the live auction, making making money on. Sure. Uh, thank, thank you, Katie, for that. Um, the, the items that have been selling best are things that are not uh, store related or commercially available. They're the unique experiences that are going to be done by some friend of an organization. Maybe it's someone's going to take, uh, take you out on a ride in their boat, or it might be uh, somebody who, uh, who has, uh, you know, a, the ability to go for a golf outing. It's maybe someone's a gourmet cook and they love, they're going to do a party, a private party in their home. You know, thing, obviously all of this happens once you're we're off quarantine, but they're selling them now for future. We all know that eventually the quarantine is going to end. And once the quarantine ends, that's when the, um, the item gets retrieved. There's really not a lot that can be retrieved now when we're all sequestered in our homes, right? So what we're finding are people have, are having success is setting the certificate, uh, vali you know, valid period to start at some point in the future. So if your event is in May, the certificate doesn't start to run in May, it starts in November or it starts on January 1st of 2021 or something like that. So people are buying futures. And again, in, in, uh, in most cases, um, auctions are really not about buying anything. They're about giving. And what you're doing is re you're rewarding people with lovely parting gifts for their, for their donation. So it really doesn't matter whether you're giving them something that can be redeemed in May or can be redeemed in January. They're, they're doing it primarily to help you achieve your goal. And if they get something of value out of it that they can use later on down the road, that's sort of a plus for them. And so I wouldn't be too concerned about what you sell. I've, I've seen people selling uh, tickets, for example, to, uh, you know, to the Mariners uh, out here, you know, Seattle Mariners, uh, and they're selling tickets to, to even though, the, even though the, uh, the season hasn't opened but people are still buying tickets for a game, a future date, you know, game to be determined. We're selling tickets to Seahawks, uh, even though the football season may be in jeopardy. Um, we are definitely seeing a home, uh, uh, unique experiences, one of a kind experiences selling again, where it might not be retrievable for a long time. And by the way, trips are one of those things I probably ought to mention really quick. I get asked all the time, what about trips? You know, no one's taking trips now. How do you sell trips? What you want to do is ask the people that can donate a trip, whoever that, that supplier is of the trip, ask them to please set the um, expiration date such that it doesn't have to be within one year of the event. Because people look at the clock running and they go, well, gosh, if I buy it now and I can't take a trip for six months, I'm only going to get six, six months worth of use out of it. So that's a little bit of a turnoff. So instead, just say to them, can we set the expiration date to, to be one year from the date that we that people start taking trips again, because those people are going to want to build their business as well. They're out of business now. You know, they're not doing a lot of cruises right now, right? But eventually those cruise ships are going to sail and those cruise lines are going to want people to start taking cruises again. So you want to ask them to, to uh, give you a certificate 
that's good for at least one year once they start doing cruises again. Kind of push the envelope back out there. Long-winded answer, but thank you for asking it, Katie. Uh, anyone else? I think Judy has been uh, patiently waiting. Yes, Judy. You have to unmute. Can I unmute, Judy? Or no? Yeah, I'm on, okay. We were scheduled go. for March 15th. We're on the East Coast also. Yeah. And um, we're currently in the process of doing the text bid on, online. We're closing on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, we have the Raise the Paddle going right now. And um, we're going to show a little video. We're, we're actually going to do a Zoom. We we're right. initially going to do it live feed. But one thing I can tell you is we, we withdrew almost all of our vacations and um, I called the hotels and I called the managers and spoke with them and told them the situation. Now, most of them were supposed to expire um, January of 2021. Every single hotel from Nashville, Chicago, Boston, um, Washington, uh, they all extended them to December 31st, 2021, yeah. every yeah. one of them. So uh, don't be afraid to do that. And we also had another one that people were very concerned of about was um, the Inn at Little, Wash at Little Washington, because that was supposed to expire also and called them, not a problem. So don't be afraid to talk to your donors that way. Excellent. Okay. Very Thank good. you, Judy. Um, let's see. We, um, Esther has a question about, uh, can you still do a raffle? Do you expect the economy to affect auction donations? Yeah. So what we're finding, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and, and mute uh, uh, Judy again. There we go. Uh, so let's, let's, let's talk about, can you still expect people to, be, to make donations? Yes. You know, just because they're sequestered doesn't mean they've stopped caring about what you do. Um, as I like to describe um, getting donations as fishing in a large lake. There are fish that will bite, there'll be fish that won't bite. When you have a tough time in the economy, there are still fish that will bite, it's just the lake is smaller. So don't be afraid to ask. You know, it may be that you'll have to ask more people and it may be that the people that you do ask will give a smaller amount, but they still deserve to be asked because as soon as you stop asking, you're sending the message that you no longer need the money. And that's not a good message. It's a self-selection self process. It's an opt-in process. Let your supporters opt in to help you. They know how to say no, but don't, don't uh, say no for them is the point, okay? Now, as far as raffle, uh, I always try to not talk about raffles because raffle uh, laws um, vary from state to state. I have no idea where you are and I don't know if you work for the lottery commission, so I'm not going to, I'm not <laughs> going to talk about raffles, okay? I will tell you that people are doing opportunity drawings and, and uh, door prize drawings and, and golden ticket drawings and all kinds of marvelous ways for people to give you a donation and perhaps be rewarded with a lovely random uh, prize, that is going very well. <laughs> so you can take that for what it's worth, okay? Um, I've seen a number of people do what we call golden ticket raffles. And what they, they'll run the golden ticket sales for two or three weeks leading up to their live auction and then close the golden ticket uh, an hour or two before the live auction opens. Then, uh, draw the winner of the golden ticket and then call that person or email that person and say, you've won your choice of items in the live auction. What would you like? And then make that big splash. When you open the live auction, make a big splash that, Hey, guess what? You know, uh, uh, Cynthia won the, uh, Cynthia won the, the, you know, the weekend getaway. Congratulations, Cynthia. Uh, and you make everybody that's there for the live auction realize that there's one fewer item to select because somebody won the golden ticket. So I would not shy away from doing it. I think people are still willing to do it. Was there another question? Um, we've got one from uh, Mary B. She wants to know about um, how soon do you have to make the decision to go with Maestro? Uh, Mary, I'll let you finish it up. Yeah, we were just wondering, um, I can't remember who we talked to uh, last week or a week before, and they said that we need to make a decision pretty quick, but I thought the way you're sounding, you guys can turn this around pretty quickly. 
if we well, decide we, that we're going to go with Maestro Web. Yeah, no, absolutely. We can turn it around very quickly. The question is whether you can uh, build. No, I don't mean it that. I, that's not a negative. I didn't mean it that way. I put too much of a pause in there. Uh, we can turn around very quickly. The question is whether you can get your constituents that you're going to reach out to to know that you're going to have an online auction. Can you build the momentum? Can you build the energy? Can you uh, put an can you put the items up online long enough for people to start bonding with them and previewing them? And do you still have time to go out and find uh, sponsorships and that sort of thing? If you've already planned an in-room gala and you already have your sponsors and you already have your, your people that would have attended your in-room gala and you're just flipping from in-room to online, it's a matter of a couple of days. But if you still have to go out and procure the items and you got to find your sponsors and you got to build energy towards it, that's going to be your longest lead time. It's not going to be the time it takes to, to put together the website. That's pretty quick. And we'll Good. assist you with that. We'll assist you okay. with that. Yeah, because we use Maestro Pro now. So, yeah. uh, it, you know, we're pretty familiar with the product. But And then is there a lot of training for the people who are actually going to be doing the um, you know, adding the items to the website, all that type of stuff. Is that there are a lot of training involved in that? There, there is training available and we will walk them through with that. We're, since we're now pretty much 100% in the virtual world, all of our tech support people now are almost exclusively focused on MeisterWeb. So, uh, okay. you, you know, if you call in now, you're not going to be asking a lot of questions about Auction Maestro Pro likely, right? So we're pretty much dealing in the Maestro Web world, the virtual uh, premier, Maestro Web premier world. So you'll get an awful lot of support from our tech support people as well as training. And there are some online videos okay. uh, and I'm available as well. I've been doing three or four training slash demos a day myself personally. I will certainly do that for anybody that's trying to get up and running quickly. Good to know. And, and the live auction stuff, um, you know, you said that there's, you guys had someone in a studio um, mm -hmm. Would you see like we could be at our building and have our director possibly kick it off? And, and how would we, you know, you sounds like you had a camera person there. I'm not quite sure how we would go about doing something like that. So you could do something as simple as a webcam. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean you're looking at me right now. I don't know if you're, yep. you're looking at the video or not, but am I on? I mean, can you, I mean, I don't yep. know. You could take this, you could take a, an HD webcam and set the HD webcam up on a tripod and just stand in front of a nice backdrop uh, and, and do it. I think uh, Judy's going to do something like that or has done something like that at, at her event. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's really all you need. It's not an elaborate setup. Now, now, for the Boys and Girls Club, we have the luxury of a television studio that has donated their, their studio. So we're going to decorate it with nice gobo lights, you know, and flowers sure. all around and a little staging and that sort of thing. We're going to make it look like we were actually at the gala but that's not necessary you just just a familiar backdrop is really a nice friendly familiar backdrop is really all you need good thank you yeah um jay i think we've got um we've got a question from jennifer and a question from esther and i think that is probably going to um wrap up everything up but right. um and i have one wrap if... and i have one wrap up slide when we're done Okay, so Jennifer is asking, how are you as the live, as the auctioneer going to see what the bids on live items are during your program broadcast? Right, so the way I'm gonna do it is, um, can we go, can I show my screen again? Can I share my, my screen again? Your screen is still being shared. You never so, unshared it. Are, are, are you, which one are you seeing? Are you seeing Imagine Higher Dreams? Yes. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, here's this, uh, this will be in here. Uh, this area, of course the bid box will be in here, but. This area down below, uh, the picture will be scrolling the bids as people are bidding. Remember, I'm not going to be taking one item at a time. I'm going to be moving between all of the items. I'm opening all the items at the same time. So I'll go in and I'll say, well, everybody, let's take a look at item 102. That's the kid, uh, the kid's car. Wow, look at that. We're already up to $250. Or oh, wow, Mary just jumped in there and she's at $350. And now Joe's in there at at $500, that's fantastic. We'll come back to that in just a second. Let's go take a look at another one. Why don't we jump over here to the uh, quarter pound of local beef? Ooh, that's going really well. And so I'll be highlighting the quarter pound of, of beef and watching that for about 30 seconds or a minute. And then I'll go back over here and I'll say, let's take, let's take a look at the, you know, around the world bottles of wine. And I'll be looking at the bids flowing in on that. So I'm gonna be interactive with all 10 of those items simultaneously as opposed to doing them one at a time. But that's where I'll do it. I'll be watching the bids flowing in directly on the item. Did that answer the question, I hope? And that, by the way, does not take an auctioneer. Uh, I hate to admit that because I've been, been an auctioneer for 30 years. I, I hate the thought that 
that someone who's not an auctioneer can actually do that. But you know what? Anybody can do that. It's not that hard. That part's not that hard. <laughs> all right, we've got we've got one more question. I think I can probably answer that. Esther's asking, well, you know, when this is all over, do we go back to the old ways or the new ways or something in between? Um, I think going back to exclusively the old ways is not a, a good safe strategy. Um, I, I'm, I can tell you, Richard, I think what's going to happen is that we're going to be, we're going to come out of this stronger with new tools that we can now start integrating in with, um, with the gala. For example, I can envision very short order that when we're back in room with galas, there's no reason why people, the 350 people in the room can't be bidding against people that are alumni in another state. And we're going to, we'll have in MeisterWeb, we'll have the tools to where people will be able to, to be in another state. Maybe they, you know, the class of, of 75 from your school or the class of 86 from your school, and they've relocated to a completely different part of the world, but they want to help support you. There's no reason why we can't include them as a bidder and let them bid against the people that are in the room. I actually did that uh, on an experimental basis about 20 years ago for a, a group called the Surf Industry Manufacturers Association. And we have people bidding uh, against people in the room uh, and the people, the bidders were in Australia and New Zealand and they were, you know, in Hawaii and they were all bidding against people that are in room in Dana Point, uh, California. So it is possible. And I think that might be the hybrid that we end up with in the future. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that you've got to appreciate about the internet that you need to take advantage of are two things. It's the scope and the scale. You can have your auction take place around the world. That's right. No problem. And on the scale side of things, uh, once everything is automated, it makes no difference whether there's 10, 1,000, or 100,000 people dealing with it. It's yeah. exactly the same. And that's a wonderful place to be. And I, I urge you to think hybrid, and I urge you to think globally. Yeah, that's right. In fact, what I've been telling people a lot, and we're almost ready to wrap this up here, but what I've been telling people is that now that you are in the virtual world, you're no longer constrained by either time or space. You're not constrained by the four hour block and you're not constrained, constrained by the space of the, of the ballroom. And you should think more broadly in those terms. Uh, you know, you, you now have four days, not four hours. You have now, now the world, no longer a, a ballroom. So it, I think ultimately we're going to, all of us on this call will be raising more money as a result, not less. I'm very optimistic about the future. So to stay within the, the, the time frame we promised you, and the last three minutes, a couple of conclusions. Hopefully you can see my screen. Are you seeing the conclusion screen? So online auctions, you are seeing it, yes? Yes. Okay, great. So you, online auctions and other online auctions, they are working. You can rest assured that you will not be in unfamiliar territory when you decide to do this. You'll be there with many other people that have come before you and many people that will go after you and you will be having success as they are. Um, your expenses drop dramatically when you're online. You don't have to serve a meal now to all those people. As I mentioned earlier, the O'Day High School, they saved $90,000 on their expenses and their net was higher than they would have had in, in room. Um, and, and this is working now because people are isolated. Once they're no longer isolated, it may not work as well. I'm not saying they won't work, but they have, op they have options. You know, They may not be wanting to sit in their room and look at the screen now because they've got options. They can be out and about. So you should probably strike while the iron's hot. You know, take advantage of the fact that people are isolated and, and give them something to do now. You can still do your gala or even do another virtual event six months from now if, if, uh, if necessary. Uh, and by the way, don't cancel your event because not raising money is not an option and it really does send the wrong message. If you say, well, we'll just do our event next year, what you're really saying is, well, it's nice to have your money, but we really don't need it. And I don't think that's a good message. You've got to tell people we need it now more than ever. And so showing a sense of urgency sends that proper message. With that, I'm going to thank you personally for attending. I hope you hopefully you found this valuable. I did record it. Uh, we will make it available um, online with a link. And the siren's coming to take me away. So I guess I'm done. Thanks, everybody. We'll send you whatever you need. Okay, Or you can just contact Microsoft. They, you know, uh, info at Microsoft, whatever you want. We'll... We'll find you. Thank you. Great job. My pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You Have a good one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.